Women's Land Army. At the start of the war, Britain imported around 50% of its food requirements. So when Germany successfully mounted naval blockades in 1915, the country faced a problem. Harvest failures in 1917 exasperated an already precarious position. Left with just three weeks of food reserves and facing the prospect of famine, the Board of Agriculture founded the Women's Land Army. Over a quarter of a million female volunteers came forth to work the land. Land girls, as they were commonly known, worked in agriculture, forage or timber cutting. The majority worked as milkers and field workers, some working with horses and others with the newly introduced motor tractors. Appeals for women workers were made via recruitment posters and rallies. Demonstrations were held all over Hertfordshire and we know from the local Gazette were held in Hemel Hempstead to Burke Hempstead to Tring, Kings Langley and Apsley. Colourful and charismatic, the events featured music and processions of decorated carts, vehicles and women, all championing the cause. If Britain is to win the war, women must help. To the left, you'll see nursery rhymes for the next generation, featured in the Lands Woman magazine of August 1918. Hickory dickory duck, the mouse ran up the smock. She did not flinch or budge an inch. The mouse died of the shock. Little Bo Peep has all her sheep and knows just where to find them. She joined, you see, our land army, we've taught her how to mind them. There was a young woman, sick, nervous and blue. She had so many troubles, I know what I'd do. I'd give her a kit without any skirt and I'd soon have her whistling and shoveling dirt. The images at the top show a recruitment poster and the good service ribbon awarded to all land army recruits. At the bottom, you can see Meryl Smith, who worked at farms in Tring. Women's Land Army The recollections of a local woman, Meryl Smith, provide an insight into life as a land army girl during the First World War. One enticing aspect of the Women's Land Army was the uniform, specifically the wearing of breeches, which at the time was positively revolutionary. Meryl Smith, who worked at farms in Tring, was given no formal training and later recalled that the work was all instinct. Commencing work at 5am daily, Meryl's tasks were varied and included ploughing, looking after cattle, milking, feeding farm animals and looking after the farm's accounts. Meryl delivered milk to most of Tring with a horse-drawn cart, a physically arduous task. After her day's work, she volunteered at a local canteen for two hours each evening, serving meals to local men on leave from the front. In recognition of her service, she was awarded the Order of the Red Triangle by the YMCA. Despite the hardships of the work, which a speaker at a Women's Land Army rally in Berkhampstead ensured would provide every woman with corns on their hands, it was also a time of liberation, a taste of independence. As part of her uniform, Meryl Smith wore a pair of leather Land Army boots, which came above the calf leg, and a waterproof coat. Meryl recollected how the sight of a woman in uniform provoked much interest amongst the locals, and humorously recalled how all the heads would be round the doors trying to catch a glimpse of her. The image to the left, you can see a Land Army girl's contempt for her former feminine attire, a cartoon which featured in the Landswoman magazine of June 1918. You can also see Land Army Boots advertised in the Landswoman magazine in September 1918.